Hey YouTube, it's Faye. <laughs> Faye. <laughs> and for today's video, I'm going to be talking about this, as promised. In my video last week, I showed you how you could do a coolant flush or drain and fill from home using minimal tools. And for today, I'm going to show you how this can make it so much easier. This is not a sponsored video. I've had various different brands of these, and I just got this one. This is this is brand new. I've used it a couple times, and uh, so I have not given this one the test of time, but this general idea, one of these tools, is absolutely crucial if you're gonna be doing a bunch of these services. And I'm gonna show you today why exactly that is. Now, in order to use one of these, you will, of course, need an air compressor. So if you don't have an air compressor, ugh, I'm sorry, but you should still watch this video, because uh, then you'll realize, well, you need an air compressor so you can buy one of these. <laughs> So, the first part of this video, the coolant drain is gonna be absolutely the same. You're still gonna drain the radiator, you're still gonna open up the heater control valve, you're still gonna do your block drains. However, once you have everything drained out, so you close up those drains, that is where we will be starting from today. So, you will need three additional tools today in order to complete this coolant flush using this method. And those are a clean five gallon bucket, an air compressor, and of course this. And, uh, and that's it. I don't know if you should count the five gallon bucket as a tool, but I don't know. I, I think it's actually pretty critical for this job and uh, I'll explain why in a little bit. All right, so following the steps in my previous video, link in description, I drained the coolant out of this Tacoma and now it's time to fill it back up. So I've got my clean five gallon bucket and my coolant. In my previous video, I talked about how to choose the right coolant for you, so check that out. But regardless of what type of coolant you choose, we wanna make sure that we fill up this bucket with more than enough, so that we don't accidentally run this bucket dry and introduce any air into the cooling system. So take a look at how much you just drained out of the system as a reference and make your best guesstimate from there as to how full to make this bucket. Now, in the case of a concentrated coolant, one that does not come 50-50, like this long life coolant that I have to mix for my forerunner, I like to use my bucket as a tool Tool as a mixing container. So in the case of the forerunner, I'd actually use two of these and then I would need two gallons of distilled water. So four gallons total that I'm going to put in this bucket. Now I know there's no way that my forerunner is going to use all four gallons, but that way I know that I've got it all pre-mixed and I've got the perfect 50-50 solution. Then as you can clearly see, I pour it back into my buckets with a funnel and then I label it clearly. So I know that this is ready to go and it's going to make my job for next time 100% easier because I don't have to worry about like mixing the solution as I go. All right, so now that I got my bucket prepped and full of coolant, I'm gonna actually move it as close as possible because when you get these fresh, these hoses are uh, a little stiff. So what I'm gonna do now is unravel my hose, just make sure that bucket is close enough in proximity that this part will hang out in the bucket. And if it is actually really stiff, one thing that I like to do is just like take a zip tie and zip tie the hose to the handle of the bucket. And then that way, you know, it's not gonna like pop out and suck a bunch of air into the system because that is like the opposite of what we're trying to accomplish right now. <laughs> so once that is secured down in there, I'm going to place this part of this cone, this is just like a squishy rubber cone. I'm gonna place the rubber cone onto the top of the radiator, where the radiator cap normally goes. I know at this point it seems a little wobbly, but don't worry, once we start placing this thing under a vacuum, it's gonna suction right down on there. Now we're gonna make sure that this valve is closed for right now, and I am going to hold it, I'm gonna apply a little bit of pressure to it before I start putting the system under vacuum. So, got my air hose attached, and holding it down, and now I'm going to press this button, and that is gonna to begin to put the system under vacuum. Now, as I put the system under vacuum, watch what happens to that upper radiator hose. Okay, and now see how it's pretty much holding itself in position. So you do wanna make sure that there is a good seal between the lift pump and the radiator itself. You don't want there to be a bad connection at this point because now we are gonna use this as a tool to check ourselves. Okay, so at this point, with the system under vacuum, I'll normally take a picture of where exactly the gauge is at and then I'll walk away and set a timer for like 10 or 15 minutes. Why? Ah, because this is a really freaking helpful tool. Now imagine that you just did a water pump that's maybe like behind a timing belt or something crappy like that, like some terrible location where you can't really see and you're like struggling to make sure you got the gasket in the right place and you got your mirror and you're checking and you're like, okay, I think it's good, but who the heck knows? Um, all right, here's a really easy way to check. Now, before you put everything back together, 
make sure that your system holds a good vacuum. Now, if you're using like a Toyota FIPG form in place gasket, obviously let it set first before you do this because you don't want to like suck any of that. Yeah, see, the bird agrees. You don't want to suck any of that goo like actually into the vacuum. <laughs> the vacuum of space, the vacuum of the engine that we're, that we're causing right now or the vacuum of the cooling system that we're causing right now. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna come back to this in a second and make sure that I did a good job of closing my block drains and closing my radiator drain cock. Now, once again, as I mentioned beforehand, you wanna make sure that there's a firm seal here because you don't wanna like freak yourself out or get a faulty reading by not having a good seal at this portion and then like, you know, causing it to cock a little bit, losing that seal and then oops, losing a couple pounds of pressure and then like wondering what the heck you did wrong on your repair, so. So 10 minutes later, and I can see that the gauge is still in the exact same spot. So my quick check went well, and I don't anticipate any problems with me now just filling up the entire cooling system. So from here, I've got my hose and my bucket ready to go. And now all I'm gonna do is open the valve. Now the whole time that coolant is getting sucked back into the system, you can see my upper radiator hose is sort of coming back to life. Uh, and the coolant level is going down in my bucket. The whole time I'm making sure that I hold this steady on top of the radiator so I don't let any air bubbles get in there. And I'm also making sure that my hose does not get to a point in the bucket where it could actually suck in some air because we don't want that either. Now, the cool thing about this is that this suction actually forces the thermostat open. So I don't have to worry about burping any of the air bubbles out of the cooling system after this. This is pretty much like one and done. Isn't that beautiful? That's freaking beautiful. Think back to my last video on how many steps it took to get the entire cooling system flushed out and then purged of air. Ah, and then there's this. See the advantage? All right, so now what do I do? I'm gonna disconnect my air hose, set that lovingly aside, and take this, and drain the hose back into the bucket. Now I can just take my funnel, put it on top of my coolant jugs, and empty the remainder of whatever's left in the bucket back into my clean coolant containers. I will, however, still use this guy, as shown in my previous video, to do my final little last top off. And then once it's filled itself up for the most part, I'll just go ahead and also give that upper radiator hose a squeeze to see if I can massage out any last little air bubbles that might just be caught in the upper part of the cooling system. But usually not, like that's pretty much it. So. Well, I've still got the coolant in the bucket. Oh, one of y'all taught me this trick in my last video. Before I go ahead and stick the plunger in and leak a little bit of the coolant out, I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze the upper radiator hose, then put the plunger in and lift it off. And that will spill no coolant. Now, I've also seen people skip the five gallon bucket method entirely and just put the end of the lift pump hose directly into the jugs of coolant. But I don't know, I don't like having to close the valve and change the coolant and then have to like estimate how much coolant I think is left in those like opaque containers. You know, it's just, it just makes it, I think a little bit more difficult and a five gallon bucket or like, you know, a dime a dozen. So I don't know, for like the extra hassle and then like potentially having to do it again if you get air bubbles in there and just like, ugh, I don't know, just, just get a bucket people. I think it's worth it. So anyway, I think, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, awesome. Leave me a positive comment below. Hit the thumbs up button. Maybe consider subscribing if you have not already. And uh, yeah, I will see you in my next video. All right, bye. Do you just want to be close to me? What do you think I have? What? I don't have anything. <laughs> I don't have anything but love. Oh. <laughs>